Whatever happens in 2019 with the Mets, it sure won't be boring. Despite starting 11-1 a year ago, New York ended with 77 wins, a fourth-place finish, and was widely assumed to be off-season sellers. Instead, the Mets added five former All-Stars to their roster and in the process addressed some of their biggest holes from a year ago while staking their claim as division contenders. The NL East figures to be a bear, but if the Mets jump out of the gates as quickly as they did a year ago, they may not come back to the pack, leaving Atlanta, Miami, Philadelphia, and Washington all playing catch up. to you from Nationals Park as the New York Mets are set to take on the Washington Nationals to open up the season. But first pitch right around the corner. Let's check in with Heidi Watney for a report on the Mets outlook for 2019. Matt, I was able to pay a visit to the clubhouse before the game, and amongst the players that I talked to, there was a lot of enthusiasm about this season finally getting underway. While acknowledging a number of NL East rivals also improved in the offseason, manager Mickey Calloway expressed confidence that moves made by their front office will put his club back in contention. Last year, this club got off to a 12-1 and start before fading hard in May and June. A win on opening day could go a long way towards hopefully replicating that early momentum. Thank you, Heidi. Let's go get it. Opening day baseball is next. Well, welcome to those of you just joining us. We're in the sixth inning. Nobody out. Stepping into the box, Jacob DeGrom. Here comes the first pitch. Took a little off and it's in for a called strike one. And some action out in that Washington bullpen now as we see both a left hander and a right hander throwing. Strike taken up in the zone. I got to say his command of the corners in this start has been pretty exceptional. He's mixed east and west really well and it's a big reason why he's had success. Got him. And that's eight strikeouts now for him in the ball game. Well, you can tell by their approach that they're going to go up there and try to be aggressive off this guy, but he's taking full advantage of that. He's pounding the zone with strikes, and right now we're seeing a lot of swings and misses and a lot of strikeouts and no walks either. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. You know, if I'm the hitter right here, I'm like, okay, you want to come get some early in the count? I was about to wait you out, but now game on. Pops this one up. Rendon is there. He's got it, and there are two down now. Here's Juan Ligares. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Lying toward the gap in left center. That gets down and the inning continues. So that'll extend the inning and bring Wilson Ramos to the plate with two away. And they keep the inning alive with a base hit, but you can see that's only the third hit. He's given up the entire game, so he's still in total control out there. the catcher Wilson Ramos he swings and lines it to left oh and he misses it you know your offense just throws a number up on the board for you the last thing you want to do is go out there and not throw a donut up for the boys he was able to get those first two out so quick but now with a hit in a single he finds himself in a little bit of trouble
Here's the left fielder, Ioannis Cespedes. A ball and no strikes. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far. Well hit the other way, and it's into the gap. Lagares rounds the corner and is headed home. He'll score, and the Mets have drawn even. We're all square at one apiece. And now he'll get into scoring position with two away. The pitcher was spotting his pitches effectively until now. Working the edges, painting the corners, but he left this one right over the plate, and it cost him with an RBI extra base hit right there. Into the box now, Robinson Cano. Third trip to the plate for him here. He struck out and grounded out in his first two tries. And it appears they're going to give him the intentional walk here, so now they'll have a force at any base with two gone. Ready once again, Michael Conforto. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Looking to minimize the damage here. And that's taken for strike one. On one. Getting that first pitch strike is really important when you're dealing with the bases loaded behind you. Good job to give himself the advantage there. He set the 0-1. Now a fastball off the plate away, a ball and a strike. One and two, here it is. And the pitch is off the catcher's glove as it rolls away. And a nice job to keep the runners at bay as the count moves to two and two. Ramos at third, Cespedes on second, Cano on at first with two down. Now this is on the ground to second. Is he going to get out of this? He is. They get the force at second base, and the inning is over. So it's one run on three hits, no errors, and three men left stranded. Two, three, and four do up in the home half of the sixth, all tied at one and one. In now is Adam Eaton. In previous duels with DeGrom, he's batting 500, six for 12. First offering on its way. And he'll power in a fastball that time at 94 for strike one. Takes a pitch high and away for ball one. The 1-1 one, one home. Honey pops it up. Lowry into shallow left. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. That's exactly what they wanted out of that pitch up of the zone. They took him up the ladder, and he couldn't get up to it. So that was an easy pop out. Well executed pitch there. In now is Anthony Rendon. Yes, he'll take a look at ball one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Swing and a liner. Foul. A little behind on that swing, and now he'll try to shorten up maybe and protect the plate. And he struck him out. Strikeout number eight now in the ballgame for him. Well, pitching domination continues. Just a total of two runs on the board, so both of these starters should feel really good about their showings. If you love good pitching, this has been the game for you. Juan Soto to the plate now. He was a double play victim last time around. Oh, he just blows the fastball by him for strike one. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Yeah, it really does, Matt, but this offense isn't helping him too much. It sort of feels like the next team to score is going to win this thing. And this one's tapped foul at home plate. 
Great job by the pitcher right there to put him in the proverbial rocking chair. Slowed him down, sped him up, slowed him down. Let's see where he's going now. Into right field, that's a base hit. So good work on a one and two count to get on base. Here's Matt Adams now. In previous duels with the Grom, he's a 333 hitter. First pitch coming, here it is. And that's inside for a ball, 1 and 0. Well, that was a big two out single we just saw, and for pretty obvious reasons, the inning went from totally under control to now. He's got to deal with some dangerous hitters here with a runner on base, and this is how two out rallies start. A ball and two strikes now. Two out with the man at first. in time and that ends the inning one left for Washington still tied one apiece here's Jed Lowry now he'll start the seventh and Dan is a former pitcher yourself you must be enjoying this lots of good pitching and defense today yeah. oh that's one of the keys we're seeing a lot of strikes we're seeing a lot of swings we're seeing some great plays on defense this has been a snappy one up to this point strike taken as that one catches the outer part of the plate And now a pitch that's taken here by Lowry as that evens the count at one and one. In today's game, everybody's trying to work off the mound north-south, trying to elevate that heater. He wanted that pitch right there, but I can tell you as an offensive player, I'd rather give you six inches off east-west than to have you call that high fastball. Now at the plate, Dominic Smith. He was a ground-out victim last time up. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And a fastball's in there for strike one. A ball and a strike to the Mets first baseman. One run, five hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Had nibbled the corner there, but missed two and one. Swung on and hit deep to left center. This one has a chance. And as Mets fans have heard before, that ball's out of here. So a solo shot here to left center field. First home run of the campaign for him. And the Mets move out to a 2-1 lead. You can call it unfair or just the breaks of the game, but up until this pitch, which was a big mistake, he was throwing a gem. Now he looks up at the scoreboard and he's trailing. That's demoralizing, but he's got to forget about it quickly. Standing in now, Jacob deGrom. Does it look at a changeup that drops below the knees for ball one? He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. A ball and a strike. That's now a fastball that just misses here as the count moves to two and one. We've seen him go down on strikes more than once in this game, so this has been a better approach by him at this at bat. Much more patient, and he's gotten himself into a good hitter's count. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing on that pitch, and he just didn't get the bat through the zone in time. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. First pitch on its way. And he takes ball one. 
Two runs, six hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. And here's a fastball inside as the count moves to 2 0 now. Lays off a fastball, but it's over for a strike. Two and one. You don't see too many guys at this level be laid on off speed pitches right there. That tells me he was totally sitting on something else or was going automatic tape. And he will strike him out. Ten now in the ball game, and the inning is over. So only one hit in the inning on the solo shot, but it's enough to push him out in front. It's stretch time here in our nation's capital. It's the Mets two and the Nats one. Here's Brian Dozier now. One for two on his line so far in the game. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Sharp ground ball to third. And a good throw gets him one gun. Stepping in, Kurt Suzuki in previous duels with Pogrom. Just a two for 14 line, so advantage pitcher here. This is line to left. And now this will be a base hit for Suzuki. Got to be a little frustrated on the offensive side. Yeah, everybody's getting knocks and the batting averages are flowing right now, but nobody's come up with that big runner in scoring position, two out knock kind of feel that really is going to break this game open. Here's Howie Kendrick as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Two hits in two trips for him thus far. Line drive to left, and that'll get down for a base hit. Dan, if they're going to crack through, this has got to be the opportunity they've been looking for right here. They've had a ton of hits, a ton of people on base, but no one has been able to come up with that big knock. Well, you know what, Dio? This pitch has kind of worked around trouble the entire time so far. Another inning brewing right here. Let's see if they can't get a big hit here right here and bust through in this one. Side, but well fouled. Ready with the nothing in one pitch. Upper part of the strike zone, a dangerous pitch with the changeup, but he laid off. One out with the possible tying and go ahead runs on base here. The next 0 2 misses, and that'll move it to 1 and 2 now. Those 0 2 curveballs are really tough for guys to lay off. There's a reason it's such a common pitch in that count, but he did well to spit on it there. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. Ready with another 2 2. This one's flared out toward left. Here comes Cespedes. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Speedy Trey Turner digs in now. Been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. In there, and he's in control 0-2 now. Oh, 
and two. Here it is. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Big spot. Two out. Possible tying and go-ahead runs on base. Good job of holding up on the low ball there, and it's one and two. These are the situations right here that make me miss wearing a uniform. The big spot, the cat and mouse of what's he going to throw. I'm down one, two. Can I battle back? The pitcher's trying to put me away. This is what the game's all about. Again, he sends it out of play. Hey, we all love home runs and gaffers, but I love the mano y mano right here. Five foul balls in this at bat. He continues to make this pitcher work. Count even at two and two. Big spot. Two out, possible tying, and go-ahead runs on base. And he'll get to see another one. It'll be the tenth pitch of this at bat. And he's got himself another one as he picks up strikeout number nine here, and the side is retired. So it's no runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded. Eighth inning coming up. The Mets lead it two to one. Wander Suero has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Here's Juan Lagares now. He's got a base hit tonight. He scored after reaching on a single in his last time up. Here comes the first pitch. Here's a cold strike about thigh high. Nothing in one. The 0 1 on its way. Here's a pop up now. Adams calls for it, looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. Now batting, Wilson Ramos. Two for three for him so far, including a triple. Here's the first pitch to him. In there for strike one. You know, guys, sometimes guys don't like pulling the trigger. Oh, uh oh. They want to see something go by, calibrate the speed, calibrate the break, and then make their adjustments off that. Maybe that's the case right here. Now a curveball, but he might have flown open a bit. It's one and one. Action now in the Washington bullpen as a right-hander begins to get loose. Now here's the pitch. Called strike two on the cutter, and he's behind in the count now, one and two. The one-two. He is swung on and missed. He got him. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. Yeah, Matt, that's the advantage of getting ahead in the count. You can really force hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. Here's Juana Cespedes. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. Suero has a good reputation for preventing the long ball. One swing can change the complexion of the ball game when you're coming in late, but he rarely lets that happen. Part of what makes him as effective as he is. Behind 0 and 2 now. The 0 2 pitch. Curveball, but he can't get him to chase it one and two. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Just hung in there on that one. Our pitcher's duel continues here. Two to one score as we play the eighth. Nope. Off the plate that time and a little high. It's even at two and two. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Calling for it, Kendrick. 
And that's the third out. Mets go down one, two, three, as they're unable to add to their two to one lead. Jerry's Familia is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. So coming to the plate, Adam Eaton. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Here's the first pitch to him. Line drive to left. And that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. And he'll get in at second base as the tying runs aboard with a leadoff double. Finally, a little something for them to get excited about. Yeah, a rally can begin with a single swing of the bat, and this might be their chance right here. They've struggled to produce a lot of runs, but there he is at second base. A shot to the outfield scores him. Then who knows what kind of roll they can get on. Got to take it one good at bat at a time. So striding in, Anthony Rendon, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Ready with the first pitch here it comes and a check swing here but he clearly went around on a pitch that would have been a strike anyway it's nothing in one ball one taken just off the inside Robles stands at second with no outs lays off the slider that time two and one well that's a good pitch but you have to get a little bit closer to the plate than that. That's that big sweeping slider. If it was a little closer, you might get a swing. Working for the punch out and the offering. Rolled slowly down the third baseline. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Here's one that misses inside and the counts run full now. Three and two. Walks are never good, but they're especially bad news late in games like this. It seems like they always come back to bite you. He's set, and the payoff pitch. And another foul ball. The next 3-2. Hit the other way out toward right field. Conforto moves over. He makes the catch, and tagging is the runner from second. And he is in there at third as the possible tying run. So stepping in, Juan Soto, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. And it looks as though they're going to set up the double play. There's the free pass signal. So there'll be runners at the corners with one gone. That's what's called getting the treatment. Everyone knows he's a power threat with the bat. So it's all about not letting him be the guy that beats you. Michael Taylor will be summoned now to be the pinch runner. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Matt Adams and their runners at the corners now. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Strike one to start the at bat. Count even at one and one to the Nationals' first baseman. Fouled off. One out with the possible tying and go ahead runs on base here. Easy take there on the sinker, well off the outside. And he struck him out. And wouldn't this be something if he could work out of this with that one-run lead still in check? It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities. And when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. First pitch of the at-bat. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. Big spot. Two out, possible tying and go ahead runs on base. Fouled away. Oh, 
Here's the 0 2. Frees him for strike three, and that retires the side. Back to back strikeouts keep him out of danger. More baseball on MLB Network right after this. Victor Robles will stay in the ballgame as he takes over in center. Michael Taylor will stay in the ballgame now and take over in left field. Matt Grace enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Here comes the second baseman Robinson Cano. He was given a free pass via the intentional walk last time. He's set and the pitch. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. Hey, that's a great job by the pitcher to get ahead right there. You know you got a star hitter at the plate. He's not afraid to go to two strikes or go deep in the count. That's what you have to do. You have to put him at a disadvantage with the count. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Striding in once again, Michael Conforto. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Here's a slider that's inside 1 and 0. Hit in the air out to left field. On the move is Taylor. And that is down as that could be two bases. And he'll reach second now with one away. When you're leading by one run, you want to do everything you can to add to the lead and give your bullpen a little breathing room. It makes a big difference. So double here goes a long way towards making that a real possibility. And now after the one out double time is called here as we'll get a pinch runner out there at second base. In now Jed Lowry standing in from the right side as he takes strike one. He's working on a one for three thus far. Up and in here as he had to bend out of danger. Ooh, that pitch was up and in. That's one of those pitchers purpose pitches, right? Fastball, something hard up and in. Now he can go down and away if he'd like. Get hard back up the middle. And there's out number two. Dominic Smith will stand in to try it again already with one home run of the ball game and on cue. Here it was back in the seventh inning a solo shot that provided quite a spark for these guys. Looking to keep this a one run game the pitch. First pitch is a slider called for a strike. Hey I have no problem with that take right there reliever coming in you haven't seen this guy for a while gives yourself a chance to calibrate what he's got lays off the sinker here a ball and a strike ready with the one one and this ball runs away for ball two two and one. The 2 1 pitch. Well, too much tilt on that breaking ball as it misses low. Well, this has been a good job to work the count from 0 and 1 to 3 and 1, and now he's really in the driver's seat to see a heater that he can do something with. 3 and 1, here it is. And this is down at the knees, but call the strike. Wow, it's 3 and 2 now. That's three straight sliders in a row. I'd be shocked. I would be shocked if he went to that well a fourth time. I'd be looking either.
Popped up. Suzuki is there and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. So no runs here on a base hit. No errors and one man left aboard. Nothing further in the ninth for the Mets. One last shot coming up for the Nats. They trail here two to one. Keon Broxton will stick around as he'll take over in right field. Edwin Diaz is the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the ninth. So striding forward now, Kurt Suzuki is looking for hit number three here in this at bat. He's set. Here it comes. And a called strike down in the zone. Nothing in one. A bounce it to the left side. And now this will be a base hit for Suzuki. So the leadoff hitter in the inning reaches safely for the Nationals. You can't ask for anything more than getting a leadoff man on right there. It brings the go-ahead run to the plate. He's in position to do some damage. It would be interesting to see how the manager plays this month. Time called here as with the potential time run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. Stepping into the box, Howie Kendrick. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that time run from first. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side and no one can get there. He'll try it again. The 0 1 pitch swing and a miss on the slider and he's quickly behind nothing in two. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Really important time for a strike out there guys. Tying run at first so objective number one is stranding him on base and now with one out it becomes a lot more difficult to manufacture that run. Ryan Zimmerman will be called upon here to hit with the game on the line. And the 34 year old veteran looks at a called strike. It's 0 and 1. Gomes, a runner at first with one gun in the inning. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And on 0 and 2, he misses with a fastball. High fastball right there with a two strike count. You know what that might be doing? Setting up the next pitch could be that hard slider down and away. Something breaking down and away off the plate. So he racks up the swinging strikeout on the breaking ball. Ryan Zimmerman goes down and they've got only one out left to work with. Nationals down to their final out now. And that'll bring up one of the fastest players in all the land, Trey Turner. Now there's a change up to start him out but it drops low and away for ball one. A one and one count to the Nationals leadoff batter. You know they finally get the leadoff runner on. It, it would be sad to watch him waste this opportunity. Somebody's got to come through with a base hit. Hit the other way out toward right field. And he'll put this one away for the final out and the Mets move to one and oh on the young season as this ball game is over. Well we emphasized earlier in the telecast what a lift it can be to win on opening day. But what do you really think this means Dero. Well for the winner it's a huge confidence boost Dan no doubt. But for the loser hey it's just one game. You shake it off remind yourself you're at the beginning of a long season and you come out ready to play next time.
We mentioned earlier that this game is a road sweep opportunity. And for more on that, let's go down to Heidi Watney. Well, we know in Major League Baseball how infectious the enthusiasm of winning can be. Coming through in this game to complete the series sweep would likely send this team's confidence soaring. And wouldn't it be satisfying to do it here on enemy turf, sending this home crowd away empty handed? Let's see if they can get it done. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Starlin Castro, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. And a slider tails outside for ball one. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. The 1-0. And a fastball in there for a strike, one and one. To one and two now. Hit the other way out toward right field. Conforto is there. He's got it to end the inning as they'll strand the tying run in scoring position. Marlins get one here on a couple of hits. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. It's the Mets four and the Marlins three. Adam Conley is into the ball game now as he'll make his fifth appearance of the season here. Here's the catcher Wilson Ramos. His career numbers with Adam Conley. He's a 300 hitter three for ten. He's also hit a couple of home runs against him. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. This is line to left. A dive and oh, he can't hang on. I'm shocked he got to that pitch right there. In today's game of loading up, leg kicks, toe taps, dropping the hands, trying to create launch angle, that high heater usually gets by. And that'll bring in the speedy Keon Broxton as he lines it hard to the right side but out of play. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. And here's a swing and a miss as he falls behind nothing in two. As a hitter you know the pitcher is trying to work you down around the knees in a double play situation so making him get a pitch up and actually in the zone is a must. Fielded cleanly zips it to Castro for one on the first and they get the double play. So base is empty now after the double play and that will bring in the second baseman Robinson Cano. Cano waits on the first pitch. Couldn't resist on that one, and he's behind nothing and one. Hey, hats off to the pitching staff right here. They've been able to hold a hot hitter in check in game four of this series. And it's quickly 0 and 2. 4 and 3 our score here as we play the eighth. Tried to get him to go after one below the knees, but it's one and two. Okay, so now is where I think you pull the string, throw the El Cambio up there. Hasn't seen it yet, and I think he's set up for it right here. Pop straight up, and no one will track it down. Here he comes again, one, two, and a slider swung out and missed, and the side is retired. Mets go down quickly, but they hang on to a one-run lead, four to three. Jerry's Familia will come on in relief as he'll make his second appearance of the season so far. 
Camillo. Digging in, Miguel Rojas. Lifetime against Familia. Not great. He's one for eight. From the stretch, down the third baseline. Hechaburia has it. And the inning begins with a quick out number one. And that was a no doubles defense in action right there. And it paid off big time. That ball was scorched, but the third baseman was guarding the line more than usual to prevent an extra base hit. And it ended up being pretty much right at him. That's good stuff. Stepping in now, Brian Anderson. As the sinker to him finds the zone for strike one. He's two for three and looking for more here. And a sinker's in there for a called strike, and he forges ahead, nothing in two. Now the pitch. And he looks at a sinker for a called third strike, and now there are two gone. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one. The bullpen has looked sharp, and it backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. Becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. And that misses inside 1 and 0. Pretty good pitch and a great take there. There's not a lot you could do with that slider breaking down and unless you can catch it way out front and hook it down the line. Well, the play's been made and that retires the side. Miami down in order. Score holds at 4 3. Now at the plate, Michael Conforto. His career numbers with Adam Conley. He's 0 for 9. He's also been a strikeout victim six times. First offering on its way. Here we go with inning number nine as the first pitch misses for ball one. The one one hit hard up the middle. Throw on to first for the out, and that is how the ninth inning gets underway. Ready for another chance? Jed Lowry. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Swinging a ball hit on the ground. Throw on to first takes care of him, and the top of the ninth is proving unfruitful thus far. Two quick outs here. Here's Todd Frazier now. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. First delivery to him on the way. In there, and it's 0-1. Hey, when one of your better pitches is the straight changeup, you can't be afraid to throw it at any count and at any time. And, hey, first pitch, if they're going to take it for strike one, they're going to give it to you. Go ahead and throw it. And, boy, they're really giving him fits inside now as he can't get extended there, and it's 0-2 now. Not a bad pitch there with two strikes, but it misses one and two. I know you have to protect the strike zone when you get the count to two strikes, but on an 0-2 pitch that misses by that much, it's pretty easy for a hitter not to swing at that one. Into the corner and slicing foul. Two out, nobody on. In order go the Mets and it remains a 4 3 game Edwin Diaz enters the game to finish this one off here in the bottom of the ninth. In now Neil Walker he's hitless in three at bats to this point. 
He's set and the pitch. And that's dead center for strike one. Diaz is known in part as a reliever with a, a clutch factor, perhaps. An escape artist is another way to put it. Regardless, he seems to be at his best when pressed up into difficult situations, which is kind of what you want out of a bullpen arm. No doubt about it, Matty V. And I call a guy like this troubleshooters. Guys that you can bring into a game with runners in scoring position. They don't panic. They keep the game at a slow pace. And more importantly, they make good pitches to good hitters to get out of tough situations. Pulled toward right center field. Calling for it. Conforto makes the play one away. Into the box now, Gabby Guerrero. He went down on strikes last time up. And now pitch on the way. And he swings through a fastball and doesn't catch up with it. It's 0-1. Yeah, Maddie, he's very late on that first pitch. I, I, I got to think he was guessing off speed. A swinging strike, and now it's 0-2. Two, two mid-90s fastballs right there that he doesn't seem to think he can catch up to. I wouldn't be shocked if he came right at him again with another good one. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. Pretty textbook pitching right there. Jump ahead in the count 0-2, and then start working outside the zone. Easier said than done, but that's the way you do it. Into the box, Brian Holiday. As he'll look at a fastball in there on the outer half, it's 0-1. No hits to this point. Lofted in the air out toward right center. And he'll put this one away for the final out. And the Mets make it six straight victories now as this one is over. Well, this club was not the least bit intimidated by the hostile environment they certainly walked into as they dominated this road series from beginning to end. Yeah, they sure did, d -Row. I mean, what's better for adding a little extra swagger to a team than getting a series sweep in somebody else's building? This is a big win for this ball club, and I expect to see them walking tall into the next series. are in their first appearance of the season on their home turf. With the word on that, here's Heidi Watney. Well, they have gotten a nice turnout for this home opener, Matt. These fans are getting their first chance to get a look at their team live in action, and they are into it. With all signs pointing towards an exciting finish, the intensity is building. If this team can find a way to give these fans a win, this place is going to get crazy. Baseball is back, Matt. Thank you, Heidi. Here's Matt Adams now. Career numbers versus Syndergaard. He hasn't had much success, just two for 11. First offering on its way. All over that one, but a little out in front. Foul ball. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Swings through it for strike number two. This guy's pitching really well in this one so far. You could just see he's awful confident attacking the strike zone. And when he comes off the mound at the end of the inning, he looks like he stepped in a big old bucket of sassy. Just a touch outside, one and two. And some action out in that Washington bullpen now as we see both a left-hander and a right-hander throwing. The one-two. Is a sinker that misses for a ball. And a good sinker there gets him swinging for the first down. Nice job there taking care of the leadoff hitter via the strikeout. I'll tell you, in a one-run game, especially this late, getting that first guy in the inning is so important. It changes the whole complexion of the inning. So that was a big out. First pitch on its way. Ball one taken just off the inside. 
No runs, just one hit, and no errors so far for the Nationals. Hit hard on the ground to second. Backhanded. Pro gets him, two down. Riding into the box, Kurt Suzuki. A fly out and a single for him so far. Here's the first pitch to him. There's a breaking ball that couldn't quite catch the inside. This is line to left. Cespedes is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Three up, three down for Washington. They still trail one nothing. Now to the plate, the pitcher, Noah Syndergaard. And he's likely just trying to put one in play here. 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts thus far. First delivery to him on the way. Line drive to left. Soto comes on and makes the catch in shallow left for route number one. Well, we've mentioned the conditions aren't ideal with the rain coming down, and that can make every play a little bit of an adventure. You really have to concentrate, and he did there to haul it down. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. He's gone hitless in this one, Dan, and he's not alone. No, he's not, Matt. This lineup has had no answer for their opponent on the mound so far. There's a swing and a miss, says, oh, my goodness. He loses the shillelagh on that one. Look out. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right handers starting to loosen up. One run, six hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. And he misses two and one. The two one home. Now a swing and a ball popped in the air back behind short. Turner ranges back and he has it for route number two. Digging in to try it again. Keon Broxton. It was a walk in his last trip. First pitch coming. Here it is. Off the plate and away there. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0 home. Takes this the other way to right. And Kendrick will make the play to retire the side. Mets go down 1-2-3. They lead it 1-0. to nothing. Here's Howie Kendrick. Career numbers versus Syndergaard. He has been silent. 0 for 13. Kendrick waiting now the pitch on the ground to the right side fielded by Hechevarria throw on to first in time so the leadoff man is set down to open up any number eight one gone here in the eighth as we check our line score to this point and boy you can see the story of the game right there in the hit column just one hit allowed through seven and a third he has been awfully tough to solve. Wilmer Defoe will pinch hit here and he's the potential tying run. Line to the right side. And that's into the outfield for a one out base hit. We take a look at the numbers up to this point. You see he's only given up two hits so far today, so he's been hitting his spots all game long. Remains to be seen if he can keep that shutout intact going forward, but I'm not betting against him. A speedy Trey Turner digs in now. It was a walk in his last trip. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Hey, I'm a little shocked right there. Double play situation. He doesn't go with the sinker. He goes with the ordinary fastball in that situation. Behind 0 2 now. Defoe 
Leads off first with one away. Not a bad pitch there with two strikes, but it misses one and two. Fly ball out toward left center field. Broxton's under it, two gone. In now is Adam Eaton. Career numbers versus Syndergaard, just three for 14. Here's the first pitch to him. And this pitch is taken on the inner half for strike one. A runner on first with two away. Hit down the line at first. But that'll get foul. It's 0-2 now. Ooh, he saws him off with that one. Oh, and he overshoots his first baseman as it's over his head. And they won't get him as he's able to advance from first to third on what would certainly be scored a throwing error. Man, this throw is nowhere close. As we take a look at it, you can see it sail high and down the right field line of the bag. Not sure he rushed the thrower. He just lost the grip as it left his hand, but he's not going to be happy with himself about that throw. Victor Robles will come on now and pinch run here. So striding in, Anthony Rendon, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. And with first base open, it looks as though they'll go after the next guy with the force at any base now in order and two men gone. And this is the right move here. With first base open, take the bat out of this guy's hands every single time. Juan Soto to the plate now. Been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. Now the New York manager's up off the bench on his way to the mound, and it would appear he's seen enough of his starter this afternoon. So as he departs, he'll leave this mess for the bullpen as three runners are his responsibility. So they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. Watches a fastball right there for strike one. Boy, the Nationals could use a big hit right here. They really haven't been able to do much all game long. This would be a great time to get something going. Behind 0-2 now. Here's the 0-2. And a waste pitch there, 1-2. Now a ball hit in the air, and this looks like it'll get him out of it. Cespedes is there to make the catch, and a great job of pitching as they strand the potential tying run at third. Three left for Washington. They're down 1-0. Victor Robles will stay in the ballgame as he takes over in center. Wander Suero is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. To the plate now, Wilson Ramos. Here comes the first pitch. Curveball looked at here for strike one. Ramos has a history in coming through in the clutch moments, of course. It's always a little bit of a debate whether or not being clutch is actually a trait that a player possesses. But with him, there's no denying it. We've seen him deliver in big moments repeatedly throughout his career. It just seems he elevates his game somehow when the pressure is on. Yeah, Matty, he has definitely put that debate to rest. He has absolute ice water in his veins. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. Oh. Cut fastball that time, but he doesn't bite, and now it's three and one. 
Time to focus here. This game is way too close to be walking, guys. So we'll see if he can make him swing the bat on this next pitch. Oh, definitely a fastball swing there, but a good time for the changeup. It's full three and two. Hey, there was great arm action on that 3-1 changeup right here. He's got this guy thinking. That's the beauty right now. We go to a full count. Do you sit changeup? And, oh, this is off the second base bag. Turner feels it cleanly, and they won't get an out from this as he's able to reach on a play that you just don't see very often. I know that has to be frustrating from a pitcher's standpoint, but nice execution, nice hustle. Bottom line, nice hustle. Pitcher's still one good pitch away from getting a double play. You know, Dero, one of the things you want to do is make quality pitches as a pitcher, and there's not much you can do right there. You make a pretty good pitch, and the next thing you know, you have a leadoff single on an infield ground ball. Juan Ligares will be summoned now to be the pinch runner. Here's Juan Cespedes as he takes a called strike at the knees. It's 0-1. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Man, a fastball just misses. It's one and one. Now the one and one pitch. Popped up. Dozier waits on it. Looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. That's exactly what they wanted out of that pitch up in the zone. They took him off the ladder, and he couldn't get up to it. So that was an easy pop-out. Well-executed pitch there. Here's the first pitch to him. And they go right after him on the inside corner for strike one. Oh and one delivery and it's fouled away. And this will go right by Suzuki all the way to the backstop. And forget about the double play now as he'll move up to second here on the wild pitch. Well, when you throw a breaking ball in the dirt, that's the danger. You have to trust your catcher, but this one skips away, and the open base takes the double opportunity away with it. Might prove to be costly. Put in play to the right side of the infield. Two is left. Dozier in time to first, and there are two away. Here's Rajay Davis now. to keep this a one run game the pitch first pitch is a cutter looked at 0 and 1 Lagares at third with two away that's in there and he's deep in the hole now 0 and 2 breaking ball below the zone that's ball one Tried to get him to chase that 0 2 curveball there, but he wasn't biting. Very well could see it again here, though. Ready with the 1 2. This one's blooped out toward right center field. And that will fall as he comes through. It's a base hit. In to score the runner from third, and that moves the lead to two here in the eighth. 
Well, they already had the lead, but that extra run makes a huge difference, even if it's only psychological. The pitcher knows when he steps out there that he has a little bit of wiggle room to work with. At the plate, Jed Lowry. He singled his last time up. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. High in the air out to center field. Robles is after it. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. Ninth inning coming up. The Mets lead this one two to nothing. Juan Ligares will stay in the ball game as he'll likely do the catching from here out. Edwin Diaz takes the ball now in inning number nine, looking to close the door. And now for Washington, Matt Adams, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Looking for base runners here as they're down two playing on the road. Not an easy thing to do, trying to score runs or bunch hits together off of a closer. Here comes the first pitch. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. Somebody needs to go rattle the cage right here. Take the bats and start throwing them all over the dugout to get these boys going. If this continues, I guarantee you, you see a different lineup tomorrow. And he couldn't get him to chase the 0-2 fastball. It's 1-2. and two. Okay, so now is where I think you pull the string. Throw the El Camio up there. Hasn't seen it yet, and I think he's set up for it right here. So he ran the fastball by him for the punch out. Matt Adams becomes the first out in the ninth inning. Well, we'll see a lot of these power arms coming out of the bullpen in these days, but it doesn't make it any less impressive to me. I love watching guys come in and blow smoke right by guys. And he pours this one in at the letters, 0-1. Head-to-head -head against Edwin Diaz. He's hitless in three at-bats. And he misses with it one and one. There's not too many umpires in the game that are going to ring that first strike right there. That was borderline up, even though it was in the zone. One ball and two strikes to count. Hey, hats off to the pitching staff right here. They've been able to hold a hot hitter in check in game four of this series. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. Well, you have to feel pretty confident about the way this one's going to end up as a manager. Two hitters, two strikeouts from the closer. There's not a whole lot more he can do to instill confidence that he's going to wrap this thing up without any problem. Kurt Suzuki swings and misses there, so he's down 0-1. Ready with the 0-1. And there's a called strike two as now they're down to their final strike this afternoon. A sold out crowd of 41,800 get to their feet now in Flushing. And he fouls this one off. Bases are empty here with two men out. Last strike now for the Nats. And a swing and a miss as they definitely had him reaching for that one. And this ball game is over. So those that came out for this home opener are rewarded with an exciting win. And that is such a good feeling, Maddie. I know winning always feels good, but winning your first home game is like delivering a love letter to your fans and can set the tone for good things to come. No doubt about it, Dior. You can't underestimate the value of this win for this organization. Everyone's feeling good from the fans all the way up to the front office execs.
Well, in case you don't follow this ball club too closely, Jeff McNeil is being talked about maybe as a player to watch this year, guys. He sure is, Matty V. Even though he's already looking like a key contributor, he's still a young player. But most people around this organization just think he's going to keep getting better and better. I agree with you, Dan. I think he can actually take a leap forward in his development this season. He can make a big difference for this team. I'm excited to watch him play live in this one and see what he's got. Striding in, Jeff McNeil. And we are set for baseball here this evening. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. And that's in there for strike one. Now, boys, these Braves, as they take the field here tonight, they come off another loss last time out. And, in fact, they've dropped three of their last four. Yeah, Matty, you can't win when, when you're giving up that many runs. The pitcher was missing over the heart of plate, not executing down and away, not brushing back anybody, making anyone feel uncomfortable. Guys were taking huge hacks off him. And to boot, the defense hey, was on its heels. Here we go. Boy, and it's a good night for the old hot chocolate here. 46 degrees at game time. Now a ball lined to the left up, side, up, but foul. To two balls and two strikes now. Right, this kind of hitter right One here, time. we call this guy a grinder. What are our grinders? They just kind of foul off some good pitches. They they lay off the pitches just off the plate. This is every pitcher's nightmare. A guy that's up there with a plan and not just up there swinging at anything that you throw towards home plate. And now a chance to meet the Mets. Dan Plezak, who are you focused on? Well, Matt, I can't wait to see if La Potencia, Yoana Cespedes, can keep it going. This guy's hitting over 450 his last 10 games. He's the guy I'm watching, but not only in this game. I watched him in batting practice, too, and he was hammering the ball. When you get on a kind of a roll like... So it's back to the top well, of the go, order Pete. now. Here we go. And that'll bring in the Jeff McNeil. Hey, get your pitch up there and do something. First offering with it. on its way. And he'll take strike one on the fastball, registering at 93 that time. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. The 1-1. One, one. Misses, ball two. Well, we all know he's not the greatest threat with the bat up there. His numbers certainly aren't that pretty. But, hey, I give him credit. He's really working the count right here. He's fallen behind now. Three and one. Juan Ligares waits yeah, on deck. Go. And that is in there at the letters to run it full. Three and two. Now a swing and a miss as he picks up another one. Make it four strikeouts already, and there's your first out. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Jeff McNeil. And we'll see what he can do here. Two on, two away, two home so far this inning. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. And he pumps the fastball by him at 94. It's 0 and 2. Two mid 90s fastballs right there that he doesn't seem to think he can catch up to. And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will retire the side. So two runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded. To the bottom of inning number four we go. Mets out in front, three to one. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Jeff McNeil, he was sent packing on strikes in his last trip. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot has to put the ball in play. No balls in one strike. And it's one and one. Hey, you got it. No one better. Let's go. 
That's in there on the outer half. One and two now. Flipped out the other way towards short. Leaps high as he makes the catch. Well done. Off the bat, that had soft base hit written all over it. But a nice snag there by the infielder on that soft liner. That could have been a potential base hit. Stepping up now, Jeff McNeil. Looking to change his fortunes here. 0 for 4 with two strikeouts so far in the game. All right, take a rip here. We need you. Let's go. First delivery to him on the way. Nope. Breaking ball called just a bit low. This is a critical point right here. Things are in danger of getting away from him a little, so we'll see how he deals with it. The 1 0 delivery. And a strike to even the count. 1 1. Five runs, 10 hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Wait for a good one. And this one runs a little too far in, ball two. Well, I know the last thing he wants to do is load the bases right here. So the pressure is on right now to get back in the strike zone. Now the 2-1 is looked at for ball three. Couldn't be a whole lot better situation to hit in now. Three and one, two on. He's got to be thinking he's going to get a pitch he can drive right here. The three and one pitch. Now that's popped up. Flowers is under it. And that's the third out. Well, guys, unfortunately, McNeil did not get a lot done at the plate in this game. You know what, Matty? No, he didn't. And we touched earlier on the vital importance of his contribution to this club going forward. We didn't see it today, boys. But you know what? He's got a ton of talent, and we'll look for him to back it up next game. If you've just joined us, this is a story of a pitcher who's got his club in a rare and exciting situation. Heidi, can you offer some insight without violating any baseball taboos? Well, I don't want to jinx a masterful pitching performance by saying any kind of certain words out loud, but let me just draw your attention to the number in the opposing team's hit column. Here's a hint. The number looks like a bagel, maybe a donut. Is this performance going to go down in the record books, Matt? Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. So next to the plate for the Phils, Cesar Hernandez. In previous duels with DeGrom, he's got five base hits in 25 tries. He's also been a strikeout victim six times. Fastball in there for a called strike. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Hernandez is slugging a little under the 400 mark, so the chances of his connecting with the ball right here aren't particularly good. Behind 0-2 now. And he looks at a ball, one and two. Now a swing and a ball popped in the air back behind short. And Lowry will look this one in for the first out. And with one away, today, of course, Jackie Robinson Day around Major League Baseball. We had a nice ceremony before the game in honor of number 42 as his legacy lives on to this day. Digging in now for Philadelphia. Bryce Harper, he got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, today's game certainly don't get 
completely go, reprimanded for too many strikeouts, but no one likes to go down looking. Expect him to be a little bit more aggressive at the dish this A.B. No balls and a strike to count. The wind up and the 0 1. And he gets him to swing through that one. He's in control 0 and 2. The seventh inning is one of those innings when you might start seeing some warning signs from your starters that they're reaching the end of their rope, but that's not the case here. He looks really solid to me. Got him. So that's the second out of the inning, and he's seven outs away now. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. And that'll bring up the Sacramento product, Reese Hoskins, as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Oh, for two for him to this point. One ball and one strike to the Phillies' first baseman. He's obviously been very impressive on the mound in this one. And I think the big reason why is his ability to stay out of the middle of the zone. That's kind of obvious. And we'll have to leave it there as the play is made here to end the inning. Seven no-hit innings now as he closes in on his masterpiece. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mets 12 and the Phillies nothing. Up next will be Nick Williams. We're in the eighth now, and nothing's changed out there on the mound. Well, I've been very impressed with how the starter's going about his business, Matt. He's looked really sharp, and it's hard to know if it's had any effect, but getting that early lead from his offense could have really helped settle him in. First pitch of the at-bat. Mm, a little tardy there. No balls and a strike. I mean, this offense has struggled because they haven't been able to make the adjustment. He stayed staunch on the outer half, and these guys have not worked the ball the other way. One one. Not what he wanted out, to do man. there with the slider as it misses well above the zone. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Ligares is it. under it. Ball, ball, ball. One down. Here's the center fielder, Odubel Herrera. He lined out his first time around and then went down on strikes last time up. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Fouled off. No runs, One down. no hits, One down. and five errors in the game so far. Ouch. Well, and that misses one and one. one, and one. Here we go, guys. Uh, changed things up on him, and he got him to swing through it. One and two now. Looking to punch him out again. The pitch. Fouled away. Batter's going to have to find a way to regroup right there. That caught too much of the plate. He knew it. He missed it. He might not get another opportunity to put the ball in play. And another foul ball. One out, nobody on. Got him. Four outs away from his date with history. Well, a huge out number two here at the eighth. Four outs remain, but the finish line is starting to come into focus now. Into the box, Michael Franco, in previous duels with DeGrom, comes in with six hits in 24 at-bats. First pitch on its way. There's a good breaking ball as it gets the bottom of the zone. Guys, I've been really impressed with him tonight. I mean, he's carving these guys up with all of his pitches. Hit down the third baseline, but this will be a foul ball as he's behind 0-2 now. The windup and the 0-2 pitch. Pitch popped up. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. And they'll try to bounce a curveball on 0 and 2, but he holds back. It's 1 and 2 now. Those 0 2 curveballs are really tough for guys to lay off. There's a reason it's such a common pitch in that count, but he did well to spit on it there. Oh. 
high in the air out to center field. Lagares is camped under this one, and that will retire the side. Phillies down in order, just about given up for dead. It's 12 to nothing. Standing in, Jacob DeGrom, struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. Hey, let her rip, let her rip. First pitch of the at bat. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Need you right here one time, kid. Here comes the 0 1. And this will be fouled away. Hey, have a rip like you can. Here you go. Hey, see it up. Drive the 0 oh, and way. 2 Let's count. Here's the pitch. That's lifted the other way out to left. Williams is under it. And the inning is over. Down in order go the Mets. But they lead it by a count of 12 to nothing. Stepping in, Drew Butera starting things for his side in the ninth as they face the improbable odds of trying to come back in this one. Yeah, not a lot of hope for them at this point. These guys know these bats still count, at least for their own stats. You can't mill in your chances as a professional. Hit in the air down the right field line. But this will wind up being a foul ball. Timing just to tick off there as this one's fouled off to the right. Go out here, huh? Now the 0 2 pitch. And he struck him out for route number one. So now just two outs away from the no no. Yet another strikeout for him on the mound. And fellas, this has been one of his favorite victims tonight. That's the third time he sent him packing. So he's got him pretty well figured out. Not that the rest of this lineup has been much better. Andrew McCutcheon will move into the on deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. behind 0 and 2 now classic change of speeds right there through the hitters timing off got a late foul ball interested to see where he goes now struck him out so now just one man stands between he and his no hitter Matt just about everything he's doing is working all of his pitches great command great location and the big key with two strikes he's attacking the zone Gene Segura standing in. As he lines it hard to the right side, but out of play. He could really use a knock here. 0 for 3 in the game so far. A ball and a strike to the Phillies' leadoff man. And he'll try and end it here with an even 100 pitches. Oh, what an unbelievable effort. He has had total. But he's right there to glove it and let the celebration begin. Well, it's something that every pitcher who's ever picked up a baseball dreams about, and he's done it. A no-hit gem in one of the most dominant performances I've seen in a while. He's in the record books forever now. Are you kidding me, Dan? What a dominant performance right there. A complete game no-hitter, and this one's going down in team history. Total masterpiece. He had everything working, and he saw it all the way through the end. What a thrill for this organization and its fans, and what a shot in the arm to this team. <laughs>